Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome. Uh, today you are joining my partner John Coleman and I with Dr. Liz Lister. And uh, we're going to talk about stuff that has to do with your health. I, I'm just guessing here because uh, we actually have to have an entire discussion on your trip to Africa. So that won't be hormones, uh, except in a, in a tertiary kind of way. But today, we're still dealing with the COVID. Uh, John, are there any things that you still need to know about that? Yes, I, I want Dr. Liz, doc, by the way, Dr. Liz, good morning, hello, good to see you. Good morning, likewise. <laughs> I love Art. I love your introduction. Where we're not going to talk about this, and we're going to talk about that, but we're going to talk about <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's my stuff. Yeah. My yeah. stuff is that this COVID thing has been going on much too long for my taste. Um, but the more recent controversy, uh, the longer we stay locked down to whatever various degrees we're locking down anymore, um, the more the this new topic comes up and that is the harm of isolation and i'm specifically thinking of uh, the kids i have grandkids who live just up the hill and um they all want to go back to school their parents want them to go back to school but their school is having them um do virtual training for at least the first month and then the school district's going to poll everybody and see if they really want to go back to school and my guess is what they'll probably do is you know, those kids that need to be in the classroom will go and all the kids will stay home and they'll work it out. But the point I'm trying to get to is that the isolation of not being with your classmates in the case of kids, but also I would think with adults working oh, from yeah. home on a computer mm -hmm. versus sitting in an office and yelling across, hey, you, you want to go for coffee? You know, that kind of thing. That has a real emotional if not physical impact on human beings and and I, I would love you to address that from the the medical point of view absolutely that's exactly right i was interested in this whole topic all this time and i saw a, there's actually a recent study that came out during the summer actually looking at older adults older adults to because they are often disproportionately affected by social isolation. Oh, we sure. know that the COVID virus is potentially more threatening to older adults. Yes. Therefore, it makes it even a little more concerning to, let's say, stay with the social distancing, which as we were just saying, can lead to feelings of isolation. So they took up a survey and they surveyed over 800 adults over the age of 60. It was very interesting. They had some very interesting findings. Well, then, John, they, they must have missed you and I because uh, nobody asked me. <laughs> me so too. Maybe, maybe, I'm still thinking about the kids, but you're right, Dr. Yeah. Liz. Um, it, it's the older generation. Sometimes people are widowed, they're divorced, they're whatever, they're living alone. And um, I, aren't you or might be a good example. You're got your wife and you're living in your condo um but you're in that community where there must be a lot of uh, older singles and the question is what kind of community support do they get because we know that the isolation for older people particularly during the holidays can be can be very brutal boy am i a bad exactly. example i'm a bad example for that uh, we live in a, uh, a retirement community uh, over 55 and um uh, a lot of people here are working, so it's not like uh, uh, there's a, a, a nearby place called Leisure World, which we had no interest in, but had activities and everything else. But uh, because my wife worked for five or six years before she retired, we've been working, the two of us, even though we're working virtually, uh, we're still probably as busy as uh, anybody with uh, uh, full-time occupations. And so we never really got to, uh, most of our friends and neighbors live other places, but the amazing thing, and uh, we may be the exceptions to the rule, and obviously inner cities and people who are tragically really alone don't get this, but we have the internet. And I'm taking, uh, 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 I've actually signed up for seven uh, emeritus classes, uh, senior classes, uh, Tai Chi and some other things that um, keep me busy. Plus we're busy all the time. Right. I, I don't feel isolated at all. And I do run out to the stores at seven o'clock in the morning 
at six o'clock in the morning for senior hour to do my shopping. So I think I'm sort of the exception. But you, you are are in a rural uh, paradise uh, with chickens and goats and gophers and <laughs> and and do uh, dukes. You have a dug and dukes and pigs and everything. Yeah. yeah, but you know it's interesting. We're uh, while we're not in a senior community. Um, we have a lot of seniors living around us, and uh, I won't say that we're all, you know, get together for cocktails, but there's a reasonable amount of communication, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not always the case. So we know that for people in their later years, isolation could be a problem, despite COVID. And so, right. Liz, what's the what's the problems with isolation? What what is that? What's the what? How does that affect people? What they found in the study, which I think we can speak generally to how it affects people, is the increased feelings of loneliness, increased degree of stress. And it's very interesting to the point that you're both getting at of whether people are still working or not. They found a difference in the respondents in the survey from age 60 to 70 and the ones that were 71 and up and better, okay? So the 60 to 70 decade did report more stress, more feelings of loneliness, and the 71 and above definitely, they reported more of those feelings. However, they did not have more stress. 74% of them felt that they were doing great and not, doing, not having issues uh, related to stress. So I think that all of it is related to every, all the different factors that you're both bringing up. Are you still busy? Are you still active? And do you have Wi-Fi access? So they acknowledged in this study, for example, that they weren't reaching, it was done online, it was done through an online survey. And so they weren't reaching people who were not connected on the internet. That definitely uh, was gonna put people more at risk, uh, not knowing if older citizens needed any assistance, if they were not connected on the internet, and also more tech savvy. They definitely reported, most of the respondents reported an increased use of technology. I know that's the case in my family. Uh, back in March, I taught my dad how to use Zoom. Uh, I taught my mom how to use Zoom, and they're both in their 80s. And that was a lot of fun, and the two of them are having now a lot of fun with that. Uh, they, they're in different places. My mom's been married to my stepdad for over 30 years, and my dad lives in Boston. They've been doing classes. They've been, my, my stepdad's actually been working as well. And he's 87. So there you have it. So as a general rule, other than the exceptions of John and I, uh, well, of course, you're, you're young and you're working, but uh, uh, John and I, who are just amazingly adaptive and, uh, and some people say pretty handsome. Uh, uh, so we have a lot of things going for us that the ordinary folk uh, don't have. Uh, but, but we don't have this overwhelming sense of self-worth. So, But as a... <laughs> As a general rule, uh, what would you say to people in general if they're feeling a little bit down, even if they have internet access or things like that? What are the kind of things that they could think about to maybe make um, their situation more tolerable? Because it's likely to go on, especially for people retired or retiring soon, uh, probably another year or so before we're going to fully feel comfortable going out. Uh, uh, into a somewhat normal life. Uh, do you have any general uh, uh, hints or suggestions for them? Definitely to be as comfortable as possible with various technologies. Uh, there's all kinds of apps now. There's a fun app that we discovered that uh, Facebook Messenger Kids which I'm a little wary of social media and their influence at the moment. However, it's a fun app that's designed to be very easy to use on an iPad, maybe on a phone, on a smartphone, where you can play games. They're interactive games. So you make the phone call, but then you can initiate a game. So my general point was to your question, learning, learn, take the opportunity to learn something new especially as it relates to technology, that is what can keep us connected in these challenging times. Great. And by the way, uh, uh, a shout out for Messenger Kids. I have a, a five-year-old and an eight-year-old uh, uh, grandkids who are constantly, of course, I think it's only on, um, I don't know whether it's only on uh, iPhones, 
but uh, there may be an Android version of it. But my kids call me all the time, and they have the fancy uh, phones and uh, iPads, so they're able to put faces on and everything else. Mine, I can't. All I can do is show up. Uh, but that's just, <laughs> but but it's it's it's, it's, it's well regulated by their parents to make sure that they can only speak to uh, people they approve, so grandparents and, and cousins and nephews and things like that. It's a great app. Exactly. My okay. dad is studying his Italian. He's learning. He found an app to play piano. It's sort of a digital flat keyboard that he has on the table, and then he has the phone, and it's – I haven't even seen this, but he tells me about it, and it sounds really great. So he doesn't have to have a whole piano. Right. And uh, he's learning music. He's enjoying himself. But it's really about the human connection, isn't it? And keeping the mind active as much ah, as possible. Okay. Right. Good. All good advice. Appreciate that. Okay. That's and they can all, always go to visit your website uh, to get more information about things like this. Where would that be? At w that would be uh -huh, www.drlizmd.com. Well, great. Well, this has been just another great conversation. Uh, they all are with you, uh, Dr. Liz. So thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Likewise. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.